Um, just really quickly, just want to share a little bit about myself. Um, like probably most teenagers can relate, um, at about 14, I just, you know, started getting into you know, drinking and parties and that's what all my friends were doing. So just jumped on board with that. I guess the difference was I knew that it was wrong and I knew that I shouldn't be doing it. I had been taught better than that. I'd also been warned, you know, you don't go down that path that, you know, it just destroys your life and all that. So I was adamant that I was like, no, I'll stay in control. You know, I'm not going to touch drugs. I'm not going to like do anything too bad. You know, I'll still be a pretty good girl. And um, of course, like so many can probably relate, you end up doing every single thing you say you will never do. And then, um, which is scary, you know, and it leads you into more bad things. And, you know, I was having fun. I honestly, I loved going out having parties. You know, I got my sister's um, ID, so I was able to go to the clubs and I just was loving it. And I just thought, this is it, like, this is the best. Um, but, you know, like so many people have stories, you know, it all ends up, the fun starts to wear off and you start to feel really miserable, you know, and, and I was, I was feeling really, really empty, lonely. Um, I'd be like the crazy one around with my friends, but by myself, I just hate to be by myself alone with my thoughts. Just that feeling of emptiness, you know, it started to really overwhelm me. I was hugely insecure, seriously craved the attention of guys, just wanting to be loved, just wanting to be tell, told that I was like worth something, you know, and I um, yeah, was really insecure and I just thought, you know, I just need to get a boyfriend that'll fix things, you know. Um, so of course I do, you know, you end up with some guy who in looking back, I'm like, what on earth was I thinking? But there you're everything, you know. And so I um, thought this will fix things, but of course it didn't. Didn't make anything better. In fact, it made things worse. Like so much drama and emotion. So. Around this time, I started to feel really convicted. My conscience was crying out to me. And my brother, who was a Christian at the time, he started to tell me about God and about heaven and hell. And sometimes he'd really get in my face, you know, telling me, you know, Satan was my father, which I was like, I was like, whoa. And I didn't, I, that honestly, it didn't really, it didn't bother me. I just couldn't care less about that. I just shut him out. I was like, there is no way. There is no, I was not interested in God. I was like, I am not giving up my fun to be a boring Christian. That is, I wouldn't think, I just do not want that, no way. You know, I was hanging on to these, these things that were making me absolutely miserable. So I, um, every time I would drink, around this time, I, it's like people were praying for me. Now I know people really were. I would feel so, every time I'd get drunk, I'd just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to hell. I couldn't block it out anymore. I knew about the bad things I'd done and I was going to hell and that would freak me out. And I, I knew I'd heard about Jesus was going to come back. Yeah. And I was like, I am going to be left behind. But even though I knew that, even though I, I was convinced, even though I was miserable, all these things, you think I would, you know, turn to Jesus. You think I would get saved, what we call it, and pray and ask God for help. But I couldn't. I was totally bound by my sin. I was totally deceived. And I, there were three main things that were holding me back. It was um, I didn't want to give up going to parties. I didn't want to go, I didn't want to give up my friends. I had been close, I knew they just think I was a loser if I became a Christian and I didn't want to give up my boyfriend. So God began to deal with me and show me that these things were just, they weren't worth it. So I remember going to a party one night, got totally drunk, had the worst time ever. Next night, went to another one, didn't drink, had the worst time ever. I thought, okay, this isn't all it's cracked up to be. Um, then, you know, I began to see my friends, like the true colours, like totally just like, abandoned me, to, I, like, I just couldn't believe how much they hurt me, these such close friends, you know, and then it was just my boyfriend, I was like, nah, I'm not, I, I can't afford being more lonely, like I just, there's no way I'm giving him up for this, and I remember one night, my brother had begun to really be kind to me, and, and I honestly, I, and do things for me, and reach out to me, and I, I really could see the love of God in him, and this began to really touch me and impact me. And I remember one night he said, he was like, why would you rather be with your boyfriend than be with me in heaven? And it was like total light bulb moment. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I choosing over being in heaven? What am I choosing? Like, it's not worth it to go to hell for. I was like, I am going to hell for this guy, for these parties, for friends. Like." 
It is not worth it. I was like, this is not worth going to hell for. And I, and I really did believe it. And I remember writing my diary. And it was like I was crying out to God. I was miserable. I was like, God, I, 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 I am so miserable. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll be happier being a Christian. I just really don't know. But I just, I don't want to go to hell. And I remember a, a good friend of mine became a Christian soon after that. I came to church. I thought, okay, I'm going to, I reluctantly gave it a go. Like they, like similar thing like this. They said, if that's you, would you like that? Would you like forgiveness? I put my hand up reluctantly. And I went down the front and I prayed. And ever since then, I have, I have never, ever been the same. And, you know, I was just searching for fun and joy and life. And, you know, all the stuff everyone is. And it was in Jesus. It wasn't in this rubbish. It wasn't in the parties. It was all in Jesus. I found exactly what I had been looking for this whole time. You know, these things we hang on to, they're making us miserable. Jesus brings life. And it is the best. And let me tell you, like, as you know, if you're insecure, you're feeling rejected, like feeling lonely, Jesus can set you free of all of that. I am living proof. Finally, I have confidence in who I am in Christ. Like only God can bring that. A boyfriend can't bring that. Like being crazy and wild, it all comes through Jesus. And you know, the best feeling is just knowing that you're going to heaven and that your sins are forgiven and that you can have dominion over your sin. You don't have to be bound. You don't have to be a slave. And, you know, all those things I was worried about letting go, God has blessed me with, with like, a, a life worth living, you know, that you can be involved in a church and, and living for God and being Christian is it exciting. It is the best. It's not, I'm not miserable anymore. And, you know, blessing with true friends, like, it's like family, like, being a Christian. You're part of, like, it, it's, it's so much better than what the world has to offer. You know, I just can't even begin to tell you all the things God has done in my life. I have never gone back to my old life, never gone back because why would I? Like, this is the best yeah. thing ever. Yeah. And like, if, if, you, if you're thinking about this, you're a visitor, maybe you're not saved, you're not a Christian, just ask yourself, what is holding you back? And honestly, is it really worth it? Is it worth losing your soul? Is it worth going to hell for? It's probably making you miserable anyway. God can give you life and he can, you can make heaven your home when you die. It's the best thing ever. Thanks. Yeah, that was fantastic.